Alright, here we are, uh, liftsladdersanddocks.com in Schoolcraft, Michigan, uh, just south of Kalamazoo. Uh, we're going to show you how we put it in a dock using our foam floats that I have down in the water. Uh, they're 120 bucks a piece. I have one and a half of them. So two floats cut into to half pieces. Um, I'm stacking three of them right now, so one and a half floats because that's about the right height for our dock out here. You can use all four, you can use two, it just depends on what you need. Uh, if you need three, you can get away with just cutting one up into thirds. It's just a little bit tippier. But we have our anodized aluminum dock here. Uh, the hardest part of doing all this is getting it unstacked by yourself to do it without scratching. So I'm going to cheat and start with one on the ground here, but uh, there is a way to do it. It's just tricky. Uh, so do it at your own risk. You might scratch your dock. Uh, but here we go. These are 85 pounds a piece, uh, 4 by 10 anodized aluminum. What I do is tip it up. And you've got your framework underneath here. We do two stringers the length of the dock, four side to side. A lot of people cheat and just kind of do one down the center, two side to side, it's gonna be a lot bouncier. So we put double of what you find at most hardware stores, but uh, 190 spot welds, um, 85 pounds. Try this with your wooden dock. So, bring it over, got my plugs here. Set it down a little bit offset so it's gonna walk more like a wheelbarrow. Set those on there. Uh, so I'm gonna put pressure down on it, or I could walk to the other end, but uh, this is just as easy to put a little pressure on. So when you get out here, uh, see how I have this balance point so it tips the way I have it offset. You always want to stack your docks in the order that they're coming out and in the direction. So I'm going to keep this straight just in case you have any holes drilled anywhere. But basically you're just going to come up to it, give it a little bump up, set it in. Now it's nice and balanced for me to come grab my bolts. We use an old metal coffee can with a little bit of weight in it. Uh, it's not very fun if your dock bolt container blows in with all your bolts. So, I'm going to bolt this in here just loosely right now. This one's high enough to duck under, luckily. in with a washer on each side. And we give you stainless bolts with every dock, stainless washers, galvanized nut. So you don't have any rust anywhere except for the nut. Anything you got to be careful if you put a stainless nut on there it'll weld itself together. So the only other option is brass which is pretty soft which is why we do the galvanized so that it doesn't spin itself over. So I'm going to grab my support. We have them all labeled and we stack them in order as well. So they're labeled, this one's the seventh one out to the left and to the right. Uh, big fat permanent marker. Once the dock's on it, you won't see it. Come out. In this one, we have a little bit of the, uh, the poles sticking through the foot pads, so it kind of pokes in like a mini auger. The foams don't come with ropes, but you can easily use a hole saw to drill through it. Put your own rope handle in. There you go. It's a nice calm day, but usually it's uh, a little windy out here.
can see all these poles and the uh, dock has a slight discoloration. This one is on a very flood prone, prone lake. It has gone underwater a couple times, which is uh, not something you want to do with anodized dock. You can see it's much more resistant. Everything is raw metal. So if you have a, a mill finished dock, uh, that's kind of what it turns to. Um, that's the stuff that gets hot. The anodized always stays cool to the touch. It's about 40 degrees cooler than a wooden dock. Um, this lake, for whatever reason, has some kind of dust in it. Uh, it comes out of the water, so it turns them kind of white, actually. And if you can see that in my hands, it's just there's some sort of mineral in the, in the water, uh, in the sediment. Go ahead, put my bolts in here. You always want to make sure you've got a tight gap on both sides because there is a little bit of play. Your dot can kind of snake back and forth. Uh, you don't have those, those tight. Sometimes you got to jiggle it around. And you try to get it so it's setting so that those gaps always stay tight. If you have to keep pushing on it, something's pulling somewhere. So usually it's because this support's not totally uh, vertical. Like I said, we have some of the pole stuck through the foot pads. So I just got to sneak those down in. Got nice tight gaps up here. So we're good there. We always use a six foot level. It's a little uh, uh, pickier on the level. So um, you'll see that change a little bit uh, easier. We got our max lock supports. It's a 5 16 Allen head. Uh, we just put it on our cordless impacts. You can watch the level yourself. So we just gotta go down a slight bit on this one. That probably did it. So you wanna work back and forth on these. That one went really easy, uh, but you can jam it in there a little bit sideways. So you wanna just be very careful, go back and forth, just like you're doing a wheel on a car. Uh, then you go across. If you put the level down each side, it'll tell you it's the same, but it's really not. If you stand up on shore, you'll see a difference. Uh, so this one just also has to go down. Make sure you're holding the support, not the dock. The dock has a little bit of play with that bolt, so you might have it perfect on the level, let go of the dock, and it's, it's gonna be off. Uh, it's pretty simple. Check it again, sometimes it settles. Good. All I'm gonna do now, uh, so these gaps stay tight on each one. I'm gonna go back through with our half inch socket. Buzz those tight. slow obviously as I'm talking through it but it is very easy to do with our foam floats with the anodized dock by yourself again the hardest part is safely getting it off the stack on shore without scratching it up uh, it takes a little effort but if you have someone around that's at least able to help you unstack them set them on the ground so you can safely pick it up without worrying about it that's awesome uh, that way they can stay out of the water uh, that's one and a half of our foam floats uh, they come five by six we cut them in half just with a handsaw you can use a bandsaw, circular saw, whatever you want. Handsaw does the best. Uh, you can put your own ropes in them just with a hole saw. Um, just kind of work your way down. Everything will settle a little bit. You can go back through, check. You know, we've got one up in the front that settled a little bit into the sand. Uh, so we're gonna go back and do that one. But overall, it's a very doable system by yourself uh, with one more person helping. It's the easiest thing you can do really. Uh, or the stronger options, easier options. Um, some of the easiest ones aren't strong. Uh, this is both. 
So uh, at a very good price point. Um, 85 pounds a piece on those dock sections. These are our max lock supports and uh, that takes a 5 16 Allen head. Um, but that's about it. Again, this is a uh, rent with list sliders and docks.com, Schoolcraft, Michigan. Thanks for watching.